Help support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps you protected when shopping online. Get $5 to try it now by using promo code QZZ2J. All right. So I, I don't have the note on who you are. So go ahead and introduce yourself and the company. And thanks for joining us. Sure. <clears throat> can you listen to me? Can you hear me? I can. I can hear you good. Okay. No problem. I'm Marco Cappellini. I'm CEO and uh, co-founder of Virtue Italy which is a startup uh, spin-off of Centrica. Virtue Italy is based in uh, Florence, Italy. So tell me a little bit about your product and what you're bringing to market for, at CES 2021. Yes, basically we, we bring two kind of products. One is a, a, an immersive and uh, interactive digital exhibition devoted to uh, Renaissance. It is called Renaissance Experience. We have already brought in uh, in uh, Italy, in uh, Germany, and in China, and we would like to to bring it in uh, in the U.S. And so the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. And the second product is a, a cloud application called R Centrica. In that case, it is a completely full digital application, and the idea is to bring uh, um, art at very high quality inside schools, education institutions, but also at the later stage in uh, uh, houses of uh, people, common, uh, I mean, common people, and so to, to the consumers. So just so everyone's clear, these are about virtual exhibitions. So p having digital... Yes, it is, yes it, is a, it is basically uh, the idea to create an exhibition in a physical space with only digital technologies that are both uh, multi-projections as well as uh, interactive applications so that uh, visitors can enjoy uh, art in a new way. If you want, I can share my screen and show you a video that uh, yeah. perhaps it's a... Uh... <laughs> Truly interactive. The folks that are going through the tour can actually then use their cell phones to get information on the painting, the origin, the the history of it, uh, all the lecture stuff that you may not get access to. It's very, very, very impressive. Thank you. So this is uh, uh, what I described before. So the possibility to to be in a, in a space which which is not a, a culture or artistic space but it becomes a, an art place because of these digital technologies and uh, the experience is uh, really fascinating for people and at the same time uh, it is an uh, edutainment uh, experience so they can learn more about uh, about this art who do you typically work with then do you work with corporations that are bringing stuff in or someone that wants to do an exhibition you know how does someone work with you um, to employ this technology? Yes. 
basically, we we work with in a business to business way. So with uh, event organizers or exhibition organizers that are present worldwide, and uh, in this way uh, we can uh, set up this exhibition in uh, a place that is very far from us because going in China or in Germany or in other places and finding all the um, network of uh, operators that can help us to, to, set, to, to set up the exhibition is, is not easy, but it's something that uh, it, uh, it feas it's feasible. And normally we, uh, we start designing the exhibition for a specific place with three, four months uh, in advance in respect of the, op of the opening. So do you have libraries of stuff? It looks like to me that you had stuff from the Sistine Chapel. It looks like maybe you've had stuff from Italy, some stuff from France. So how do you build your, do you have specific libraries of art already that is? Yes, um, we have, uh, we have um, know-how and expertise, uh, expertise in, in the company to go inside the museum and digitize uh, works of art at very, very high resolution, which is, uh, uh, the possibility to produce a 10 gigapixel image from a, a single painting. And this is uh, uh, clearly evident from uh, the other product that uh, uh, we are presenting in uh, CIS, and it, it's called Art Centrica. Art Centrica is basically a, a cloud application that enables you to discover, explore, compare, uh, more than 1,500 works of art of Uffizi Galleries, Berra Museum, and we hope to uh, enroll other museums inside the, this, uh, this service. If, if you want, I can show you very briefly how it works, because I think it's uh, uh, interesting for the public. And we have, we have about a minute and a half, so... Okay, yes. Yeah. No, no problem. It's very, uh, very fast. And for example, this is the Art Centric application, and uh, anyone that is uh, hearing us can go to artcentrica.com and insert the, uh, the email, and we'll have access for 10 days for free to uh, enjoy this art at this kind of resolution. So you see, you can go in very teeny uh, details like this one. These are 1.74 centimeter on the surface, so very, uh, very, 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 very uh, detailed. And you can do other things. For example, you compare two very famous paintings, one from uh, Caravaggio, the Bacchus, and one, again, from Caravaggio, the Medusa. And so you can do these kind of things very, very easily. And the idea is to bring this kind of uh, innovation inside uh, um, education, but also inside uh, homes. Another feature is, is this one this, that uh, you see uh, something that you are interested in, like uh, wine in this case. And with this suggestion feature, you uh, uh, discover other works of art that contain the same kind of uh, detail. So there is oh, cool. a correlation between, uh, between uh, uh, the paintings. So, so you have had a, a very brief idea, idea so you of can what it is. You can visit that at art.centrica.com. Yes. IT or com, com is it's okay. It's Either okay. one. And of course, for your other product, they're, they are located at Virtu, V-I-R-T-U, yes. Italy. So yes. virtuitaly.com. And yes. uh, this is really fantastic. And I can see now in the, in the, in the time of COVID where people are stuck at home, they can't go to galleries, they can't go to museums. This is a great way to explore. And for those that are one studying art, I, I think this is a fantastic resource. Thank you so very much exactly. for sharing this with us today. We Thank definitely you very much. Very, very cool. Very, very Thank cool. You. Awesome. Yep. Thank ciao you so from much. Italy. All right, ciao. ciao. You just never know what we're going to see here on CES. I mean, what a, such a simple but brilliant idea. I mean, really.
I'm, I would have never seen some of that art ever, not in the detail that they are able to display. So definitely check it out. I don't know what their monthly recurring cost is after the trial, but uh, you can find that out on our website. Is our next guest ready? Uh, don't want to have one yet. Oh, okay. So, oh, I thought we were out of time with him. We could have kept him on for a few more minutes. But yeah. um, again, for those of you that were, and they were nice enough, they've got us like plastered right on the front of their website. It was, they were showing our, our, uh, our tech podcast coverage there. So, uh, but again, yeah, and they still are. So uh, uh, that, that's really, really cool that they were able to, uh, to, to highlight us on their website. So V I R T U I T A L Y.com. You know, you'd have to tell Scott, we don't get many of those folks that actually do what he did, but he put an embed and a link to the content right on the website. We want and, he to said the, that. and he said the trial is for free. The trial is for free, right. Yeah. For the first 15 days. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, very, very cool. What do you, you know, I, I like to look at art. I don't, know the ins and outs of art and for my my discerning eye is that's beautiful or what was that you know i <laughs> no i thought it was pretty I, cool as well i because i'm i've visit, i've seen a bunch of museums but it's something up close and personal literally to like that's really intriguing and, and interesting it, it is art. and and you, you get the ability to and, and, you know you walk through a museum or walk through an art museum and you know it's like a you know, you, 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 I'm not the type, there's people who will sit down and study paintings for, you know, for hours, mm -hmm. you know, one portrait. And uh, me, I kind of, you know, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. But to be able to actually, you know, take a little extra time, especially if you got a real high, you know, 10 gigabit images. And if you think about, if you have a, a monitor, especially a color, uh, if, if you're an artist and you have a color a toned um screen and for those of you that don't know that there are um leds and monitors out there that are basically color color tone i guess that's i don't know if that's the right term but anyway the blacks are black the reds are reds and you know if from a palette standpoint the there's the picture looks as it does in real life and um i can imagine going through and looking at that with a you know i've got one super uh one color tone monitor in, in the in the edit room and um it'd be kind of cool i'm going to check it out on that monitor and see how it looks yeah it says but, 10 gigapixel and he also said we apply color correction oh that's good it's good and so if you have a color corrected monitor then boom you know you, you've got that and that's what i was term i was looking for if you have a color corrected uh monitor then you know you're going to see the painting as it is in the gallery you know, I often say, Kirk, you know, and I, you and I had walked through different places at CES, and I've often said that um, the OLED screens, the the images that they display to us look brighter and truer than life. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, yep. it's just like there's this absolutely fantastic <clears throat> landscapes, and you mm -hmm. know that there's no way that it naturally looks that way, and they have done something with the LED technology just to really – blow it out and look beautiful but mm -hmm. if you're an artist you want to see that you want to see that that and, true color yep. you know and um i think that's good we if, yeah. if we don't have a guest if we want to no. bring him back in for a minute yeah sure yeah hi again so, yeah marco it's your lucky day and I, I apologize <laughs> i thought i had another guest left so was i describing that correct on the on the color correction yes uh, basically, when we take uh, pictures in the museum and uh, to obtain that resolution, so a 10 gigapixel image, we shoot uh, like 5,000, 10,000 uh, shots, and then we mosaic everything to create a unique uh, picture at that resolution. We apply color correction, which, which means that we use the, uh, some targets, color targets, so that then we can understand if the digital color is as shifted in respect of the real color. Oh. In digital technologies, you will always have some errors in respect of reality because reality has a bigger color gamut. Digital technologies can approximate reality, 
but with some error. And our effort is to create an error that is so small that you cannot perceive by human eye. You know, oftentimes too, some of these paintings are oh, five, 600 years old or maybe older than that. And the paint has faded a little bit. Yeah, so sure. do you do any correction then to, because when your museum takes a, a painting for restoration, they will often do things to try to bring the color back out. So do you do any of that type of work where you try to? We 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 do also that kind of corrections, but obviously you must be guided by a very expert uh, restorer or art historian, because uh, no one knows exactly what was the color 500 years ago. Right. So you you can uh, guess or you can understand from uh, uh, studies, from books, uh, understanding also what was the origin, the physical origin of a set specific color. Yeah, and I so think that uh, because you, you only you can work with what you have, and again, it's not like it's fresh off the easel. It's it's you know it's it's set on a shelf and been exposed to the environment and light and pollution and everything else for 500 years, and and the color has definitely changed. It's just like anything else. So we all get older, we get wrinkly, you know, and on it's the same almost with painting, yeah, also, right? <laughs> also, us changes day by day. So after 500, it's uh, and it's years, it's uh, a bit different. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. But uh, those folks that spend their lifetime restoring paintings and stuff like that, that's, uh, you know, it's 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 God's work. It really is what they do and in, in preserving some of this history that, uh, you know, it's yes. right before our eyes. It's fantastic. And if I can add one uh, uh, one sentence, I think that obviously it's important to reproduce correctly uh, color and uh, trying to, to, to bring it uh, alive after 500 years. But what is really important is uh, to bring this art uh, to people because right. art is uh, something that... Uh, mm, is beneficial for our soul. And so if uh, we will be able to bring this kind of art with uh, the possibility to understand it, to explore it uh, uh, in, a, in an easy way to many people, I think that uh, it will be beneficial for uh, everyone. Yeah, I think so too, you know, and where I live, I live in uh, rural America. I have an office in a, t a city, of course, but there's no museums here. There's no art galleries. So someone may have a, you know, some local artist may put something on in a gallery, but generally there's not a lot of art in many cities in America and many cities of the world where you can go and just walk into a, a museum, an art gallery. Um, so you're right. This just makes it available. And some people economically can't travel to um, some of these destinations to see some of this uh, some of this world's art. So I think that what you're doing here is is really, really incredible. We get some people the ability to see some things they'll never see. Thank you very much. And uh, another another point is that also the business model of uh, museums and cultural institutions, I think that it it must change or in any case it must add a digital branch, to, to the revenues. And when we sell a license of our software, our <clears throat> service, uh, one percentage of that, uh, of the money that we obtain goes directly to the museum. So it is also uh, an ethic way of doing business. Yeah, because typically museums are either supported by philanthropists or people that give donations or what they charge at the door to get in. They work on really, really tight margins, many of these many of yes. these locations, you know, and they're barely able to, you know, pay the light bills. So, uh, and, anything... and, and, and it's incredible because they have, uh, our, um, I mean, they have treasures, they have, uh, our tradition, our heritage, and they preserve it. So it's, they are more important than, uh, uh it is normally achieved uh, from, uh, all of us. So it's, uh, something must be, must change also in, in this respect. You know, I think I agree with you there, and I don't think people today really think about that as much as they should. So, I agree with you. So, I commend that you're taking part of the proceeds that you earn from the from your website and from what you've done here, and returning it back to those benefactors, to those museums that are 
entrusted with those uh, pieces of art, which sometimes are just loaned to them. They don't often own all the pieces. Uh, maybe they be on perpetual loan, or sometimes they're gifted to museums, but um, yes. know, it cost money. You're, you're perfectly right. And uh, doing a parallel uh, between now, we are all uh, under this pandemic situation, so we must cure uh, our health, but we must cure also our soul. So if we uh, understand this, perhaps in the future, things will be better. I, I hope so as well. Well, again, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. And thank uh, you very much. Best of luck to you. And we'll see you next year at CES. Yes, for sure. In person. All right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you did, make sure you check out some of the more than 100 interviews we conducted during the virtual CES 2021 coverage. And of course, subscribe here on YouTube, hit the notification bell to learn when we post new content and when we go live.